Welcome back, everyone, to the Schaefer Stock Market Podcast. I am Josh Selway, talking to you again. I'm an editor at Schaefer's Investment Research, and we bring you these podcasts once a week to give you quick updates on what we're looking at over at Schaefer'sResearch.com and what I'm reading about throughout the week, giving you quick updates, get you in, out, on your way. This week, I'm going to give you a quick update on the markets. We're almost halfway through the year. Then I'm going to go through some of the things we're looking at this week. We had some big merger and acquisition news. We also had some updates on the trade front with some tariff news as well. And of course, we have the Fed meeting coming up next week, and I can uh, highlight some data on that as well. But we're going to start with a broader view of the market. I just want to give uh, an, an outlook on where stocks are trading uh, about halfway point through the year here. I usually don't spend time on the broader market stuff like to look at individual stocks and storylines, but uh, I thought it'd be a good time to do this. And we're just going to go through real quick here uh, and look at the Dow. The Dow is trading right at, uh, as of this recording, right at the 26 thousand level which is essentially where it was trading before the huge sell-off uh, in December if you recall stocks got crushed in December 18 uh, the Dow fell all the way down to the 22,000 below the 22,000 level so it was a huge sell-off in stocks uh, and this came after uh, the Dow traded all the way up uh, in October of last year, traded up to almost 27,000. So it's hanging just below there, about 1,000 points off that high. Overall, the Dow is up r roughly 12% in 2019. And the S&P 500 index, it has done uh, slightly better. It's up around 15%. So those year-to-date gains look solid uh, for those indexes. But of course, as I said, they both sold off so sharply at the end of 2018 that that kind of taints their uh, year-to-date returns. But still, those gains uh, are pretty good con considering everything we've had to endure this year in the markets. Of course, everything on the trade front, so much uncertainty that has continued uh, to go on, especially on the China front. And now we have uh, the next thing to look at on the trade front is this G20 summit that will be happening in Japan later this month at the end of June. And we had President Trump tell CNBC that if President Xi from China uh, does not attend that meeting that there will be additional tariffs on imports from China. And of course, next week, we also have the next Fed meeting. And now the Fed is not expected to uh, cut or raise interest rates at the June meeting next week. However, the July meeting, traders are expecting a, a decrease in interest rates, which from my standpoint, I'm not an expert in this field, but it's just amazing to, to look at the evolution of the Fed in recent years. Whereas a couple of years ago, if you would have told me that the Fed, uh, we'll be talking about the Fed cutting rates in 2019, I, I would not have believed you for one second. But now uh, that's what many are expecting, uh, the Fed to cut interest rates. We've had more inflation data this week, and uh, many believe that that could be a sign, uh, persuade the Fed to cut interest rates. And we just had more uh, disappointing numbers on the jobs front, where this week uh, unemployment claims came in uh, higher than expected. In fact, there was an increase in Americans filing for unemployment benefits where economists were actually expecting a slight decrease. So that is another sign of a potential slowdown in the economy that, again, people are suggesting that this could persuade the Fed to cut interest rates at the July meeting. And then a few other things that have popped up recently. We have this conflict with Iran that is heating up. The, U the Trump administration has put the blame uh, on a strike on an oil tanker on Iran. They're blaming them for that. That caused a spike in oil prices this week, and that will be an ongoing situation, it seems, uh, for the time being. And uh, we also just today, as I'm recording this, uh, we are seeing the markets react to uh, the earnings release from Broadcom, the semiconductor giant that company released earnings Thursday evening, and they gave a very downbeat outlook for the semiconductor space. They cited the Huawei restrictions as one reason that they had to cut their full year forecast. They, they said it's not entirely about that, but as a big contributor for them having to cut their outlook, and they just said that it's really weighing on demand 
in their businesses. So that is sending shockwaves throughout the entire tech sector, specifically Broadcom is an Apple supplier. They just reached a new deal with Apple this week, in fact. So that is weighing on Apple and all types of semiconductor stocks, NVIDIA and others. And uh, that's a major headwind today in the market. So that will be something to watch as well. Uh, always keeping a close tab on the semiconductor space. It's such a big area uh, in today's tech sector and today's technology world, driving so many spaces, self-driving cars, video games, uh, you name it. <clears throat> of course, uh, the semiconductors are a main component of all that. So when there are when there's trouble in that space, that really uh, causes a lot of fear in the broader technology sector. But getting back to the trade front real quick here, we had solar stocks in focus this week because trade authorities uh, in the U.S. just uh, gave some exemptions for certain solar panels to be exempt from tariffs. So that was a tailwind for solar stocks. And one stock in particular that we were looking at that uh, is setting up somewhat nicely here is first solar stock, ticker FSLR. That was a stock uh, that had some big gains in the past. Specifically back in 2017, it had a really nice year. Uh, went all the way up to trade around the $80 mark. But then uh, last year, it faced some headwinds. We had a lot going on that affected that stock. It fell all the way down to $40. So we saw it uh, lose about half its value in a, just a matter of months. But in 2019, it's back trending higher once again. And what's interesting about this stock, it's trading back around the $60 level. And we did have... Uh, some options traders targeting that $60 strike, uh, essentially betting on it to act as a short-term floor for the shares. And uh, that's they've been consolidating around that price point for a few weeks now. And there is a lot of negativity around First Solar Stock. So uh, if we see some more tailwinds come through on that sector, that could be a name that uh, continues to benefit going forward. So while these solar panels have been exempt from tariffs, uh, T Tesla was also applying for some exemptions from tariffs or some uh, relief for uh, Chinese tariffs, but uh, they were not granted uh, those exemptions from uh, U.S. officials. So that is weighing on Tesla's stock today, and that comes despite the fact that Berenberg came in and said that it is maintaining its $500 price target for its bull case for Tesla. So <clears throat> we've seen a few analysts do this now. Uh, and it happens sometimes with stocks where analysts will kind of give a bull, a bullish scenario where they think the stock could go if everything goes right, and then a bearish scenario. But with stocks like Tesla, I tend to see it more often because I think analysts just realize that the potential outcomes for a company like Tesla are so varied and so wide. So Berenberg, if in a bull case scenario here, is seeing Tesla stock potentially going up to $500 per share, which is uh, well more than double where it's at now. It's last quoted at $214 per share. Of course, that stock's been all over the place. It's had a rough year. The first few months of 2019, it's just been in a sharp downtrend, eventually bottoming around the $100 $180 level uh, in early June. So it's it picked up a little bit since then. Still a name that's been extremely volatile and that will likely continue going forward. Of course, more broadly, auto stocks were a big beneficiary of the Trump administration's decision to not go ahead and place tariffs on imports from Mexico. Uh, GM and Ford and others were, uh, uh, we saw their stocks rise on this news. But another name that I was looking at that has been very strong on the charts has been Ferrari, ticker R A. CE race and that stock uh, has been very strong it actually just rallied to all-time highs and it flashed in a couple of our internal studies here at Schaefer's suggesting that there's more upside ahead for the share specifically we were looking at the implied volatilities around uh, Ferrari which was suggesting it could be a good time to target the stocks uh, options on Ferrari there if you wanted to maybe speculate on another move higher for the shares but they've had a tremendous 2019 they're up uh, more than 53 percent year to date last trading around almost 153 dollars per share 
And uh, what we like about Ferrari as contrarian traders is that there's still a lot of negativity around the stock, especially in the options pits. Put options have been popular recently, suggesting that traders have been betting bearishly on the stock. And that's what we like to see, again, as contrarian traders, pessimism that could flip and potentially act as tailwinds for a stock. And so we could see Ferrari shares continue to stay hot here. And staying in the auto space, sort of, uh, we had Lyft and Uber getting some analyst attention this week. Evercore ISI began coverage on both ride-hailing stocks with an outperform rating and then a $74 price target for Lyft and a $60 price target for Uber. Now, Lyft stock uh, has been trading right near the $60 mark, while Uber was last seen around $44 per share or so. Uber has traded in a really tight range since going public, and even after its earnings report, as I said, it reported a billion-dollar loss, and the stock has just essentially been trading mostly flat in a really tight range. But Evercore ISI is expecting a breakout for both stocks. In its analyst note, it cited powerful near-term catalysts, okay, and an improving price environment. So they're expecting those things to help both stocks. And of course, this comes after Uber earlier in the week uh, restructured its corporate setup. It got rid of its chief chief operating officer and chief marketing officer. It consolidated some departments there across its businesses. And uh, again, not much reaction on that front as well. So uh, we'll see if Uber or Lyft, uh, Lyft had some had made some big moves. Unfortunately, a lot of that was to the downside, but Uber has yet to really make a huge move in either direction. So we'll see if anything can happen on that front for Uber. And as I said at the beginning of the show, we had some big merger news this week. Salesforce.com buying Tableau software for $15 billion, just over $15 billion. Uh, that is Salesforce's biggest acquisition ever. Uh, Tableau had been a strong performer on the charts. Uh, so that was a big acquisition for that company. And that also uh, sparked a rally in another stock we've been watching over at Schaefer's, Alteryx, ticker AYX. This is another company that works in the data and analytics business. They help companies uh, manage their data more effectively and run studies more easily and effectively. And that stock has been on fire in the past couple of years. It just continues to go higher and trade at all-time highs. Uh, we wrote about it over on SchaeferSresearch.com about how options traders who were subscribers to one of our services managed to make uh, pretty big profits off an Alderix trade. If you want to check that out over on the site, that stock jumped like 10% after this acquisition news for Tableau. So Alderix is definitely a name to watch going forward. And a couple other names here that had big weeks. Disney stock was the best Dow performer on Thursday, and that was thanks to a note out of Morgan Stanley, which lifted its Disney price target all the way up to $160. Disney's around $141 per share right now, so it's expecting Disney stock, which has already had a big year, to continue rising, and uh, Morgan Stanley is upping its expectations for its Disney Plus subscriber growth, expecting uh, that new service to provide tailwinds for Disney stocks, saying that the market has often overstated the risk and underappreciated the reward of the transition to streaming. So they're expecting Disney's uh, move to streaming to be quite beneficial for the company here. Again, it's been a huge year for Disney, and that continues to be the case. And another name that's had a big year, uh, continues to be strong, is Lululemon, ticker LULU. That is the athleisure uh, yoga apparel company. They just reported earnings. The shares so uh, soared to all-time high highs, and uh, a number of bullish analyst notes have come through since then. So that is another name that continues to outperform on the charts. One odd story that I want to call out that we uh, were looking at earlier this week at Schaefer's was this move in Madison Square Garden stock, uh, ticker MSG. So the stock uh, pulled back on Tuesday. There was a noticeable pullback in the shares, and this came after the Game 5 uh, injury of Kevin Durant, the Warriors uh, star player in the NBA Finals, where it looked as though he suffered, and turned out he suffered a serious Achilles injury, uh, likely out for the entire 2020 season, upcoming season. And the reason this affected Madison Square Garden stock is that many expect 
We're expecting Kevin Durant to go to the Knicks, which would be a huge boon, obviously, to their market. And uh, Madison Square Garden is more than just the venue there. It also comprises their TV business, their TV network. There was even talk of Kevin Durant having his own show on that network, network. all kinds of rumors and reports. So that was a pretty interesting uh, storyline there to see that come through. There was even a little bit of put trading on Madison Square Garden after that news. So it was kind of interesting to see that reaction. Uh, Kevin Durant's injury, that roll over all the way onto Wall Street. But I'm going to wrap it up now. But before I go, I just wanted to point out, I mentioned the Fed earlier. We have some interesting data over on the site uh, that could possibly help you trade around uh, the upcoming Fed meetings. That comes courtesy of Schaefer Senior Quantitative Analyst Rocky White. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in how to trade around the upcoming Fed meetings or just how stocks typically react to Fed meetings. So that's up on the site over at SchaeferSresearch.com. But until next week, I'm going to leave it right there. Make sure you are all following Schaefer's on Twitter, StockTwits, Facebook, wherever you can find us. If you want to check me out on Twitter, I'm over on Twitter at Selway151, S-E-L-W-A-Y. But until next week, guys, thank you so much for listening. Subscribe, review, whatever you can do to help the podcast. I really appreciate it. I will talk to you soon.